So we talked about acid deposition and these are some effects uh, as a result of particles or droplets of uh, sulfuric acid or nitric acid coming down from the atmosphere. The soil is going to be affected uh, because inside the soil instead of having water that plants are going to take in, obviously linking them to plants effect, you're going to have uh, levels of acidity that are not normal for this area. Here's just a graph uh, regarding um, different levels of uh, pH that specific organisms can thrive in. i um, not sure you have to really focus on that, but try to be able to interpret this chart. Acid rain will definitely damage structures. It's going to have a, a severe effect on plant life and it's going to damage uh, crops. This is a uh, diagram showing I guess the full cycle you're gonna have release of nitrous oxide from cars or burning fossil fuels sulfur from factories I guess mainly coal uh, burning plants and then you're gonna have the reaction with water causing sulfuric or nitric acid and it comes down as dry deposition or acid rain and we are gonna move on to indoor air pollution which is the unit you're missing in your notes that you um, worked on alone. Some facts that you have to know is obviously, well maybe not obvious, but pollution inside is greater than outside and this is because there is no possibility for dilution or moving out so any pollutants you have in your home is, is going to cause more damage. Health risks are magnified by 70% because there's no filtration or <clears throat> ability for the pollution to dilute or move on. So these are the four most um, dangerous indoor air pollutants. We'll start with tobacco smoke. We know it's linked to carbon monoxide. Um, I wonder if this topic is uh, diminishing somewhat because people have kind of rethought whether smoking inside the home is actually a smart choice. Radon is uh, a topic you're gonna definitely need to be aware of. In underground, trapped in rocks, is radon gas, and somehow it finds a way and seeps in to your home, and um, it's considered a very dangerous uh, gas. And as you see here, there's a picture of bedrock and you see the transfer of this gas making its way up through um, the lithosphere into your home or into the atmosphere. Small particles or basically particulate matter uh, can be defined as many things. Dust is particulate matter. Um, fiber from clothing is particulate matter and uh, basically when you breathe it in as I showed you in previous pictures, you're going to see particles found within the lung and it's obviously dangerous. And in your home, since there's nowhere for these particles to uh, move out of, it's considered one of the most dangerous. Formaldehyde, uh, which led to Lou Gehrig's disease, and remember you have to be familiar with some diseases. Think When you see this word formaldehyde, think of furniture because it's highly linked to furniture. Uh, it's found in most woods. Uh, also nail polishes, but it's mainly linked to furniture. And there's a chart in your book, and it goes over some other um, major indoor uh, air pollution that you are going to be affected by. Here's carbon monoxide, again, remember from cigarette smoke. I want to talk about asbestos. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Radon here, as you see, is radioactive rock surrounding foundation, and it can get into your water supply and cause lung cancer. So can tobacco smoke. As you see, I mentioned here, most lead to lung cancer. Um, formaldehyde, furniture stuffing, paneling, foam, insulation. Insulation is what is in between your walls, which helps your home become more energy efficient, and we're going to be talking about that in the future. Again, skin and lungs. Um, and here's particulates, pollen, pet, dust mites, um, cooking, smoke particles, all these are considered um, primary, I mean particulate matter. So some 
common problems in your home that will lead to what they call sick building syndrome, which causes a lot of health issues like respiratory problem, headaches, nausea, dizziness, are dust mites, mold, and mildew. These are basically pathogens um, as a result of indoor pollution that um, will cause severe damage and are very common problems of concern. Mold always remember that it's a living breathing organism and needs to be taken care of because it will cause severe health issues these are our primary solutions to air pollution problems and they started um, in the 70s again remember always think of the 70s as the start uh, to prevention the EPA is the Environmental Protection Agency National Ambient Air Quality Standards uh, developed for six outdoor pollutants <clears throat> and the standards for emissions of these pollutants. Basically what that means is they set standards for 188 hazardous air pollutants on how much can be emitted. However, I, I'm going to talk about this later on as well. These um, acts actually still allow some leeway for companies. Let's say they are emitting a specific gas that's considered one of these 188 hazardous pollutants and they're only allotted a specific amount of emissions they can actually buy rights from another company that's not emitting that same amount and continue to emit lead a huge problem um, because it was uh, found in water supply and it leads to cancer as well and it was a huge problem, still a problem of or a topic of concern. Lead used to be found in gasoline stations worldwide, and it was phased out completely because obviously the, the leaking of the gas led to infiltration and percolation and ended up in the bodies of water. Um, so these lead was banned because it was one of those severely uh, severe topics in environmental science that they knew they had to take drastic measures on. Here are some uh, ways to control uh, lead poisoning or lead emissions. Remove leaded paint and lead dust from older houses because lead was also found in paints and solvents. Obviously, phasing out of the gasoline. Uh, remove lead from TV sets or old computers. You know, any old appliance, old uh, homes have a higher chance of having lead poisoning so other methods to deal with um, it, uh, preventing air pollution problems burning low sulfur coal so again we're going to talk about this later on coal has high amounts of sulfur and the solution to this is not necessarily not burning coal but cleaning coal before you burn it um, Converting coal to liquid or gaseous fuel, we're going to talk about that in the future, is expensive and has a lot of downfalls, but it's still an option. Shifting to less polluting energy sources. This, to me, is the key um, to prevention, using wind power, uh, solar power, hydroelectric power. Using mass transit, obviously, if um, the number one cause of air pollution is transportation, by using any alternative to transportation is going to lead to prevention. Biking, carpooling, um, improving fuel efficiency is the least of these choices, but it's still better. Tax write-offs or rebates for buying low pollution energy efficient vehicles is, uh, is happening right now. Buying hybrids or um, eco-friendly cars, you are going to get some kind of tax write-off or rebate from the car company. So here are charts again from your book, and remember it's important to look at these and come up with some that you can easily uh, reference. Solutions to indoor air pollution, again you want to look at the difference between uh, prevention and dealing with it after. So cleaning ceiling tiles uh, and lining AC ducts to prevent release of mineral fibers versus uh, using vents to filter. Uh, so you're preventing versus uh, dealing with the, the problem after. Read over these and become familiar with at least three or four so that you can reference them on your test. Um, improving air pollution outdoor versus, versus outdoor and indoor. Obviously any efficiency, improving energy efficiency is going to be the key to uh, reducing air pollution because we know the burning of fossil fuel led to 
uh, m most of our primary air pollutants. So think of that. Rely more on renewable energy. So besides uh, improving efficiency or reducing fossil fuel use, if you rely on re alternative energy sources, you're going to reduce the, the need for the fossil fuels. Indoor, uh, even though we haven't really talked about money being an issue, but reducing poverty will help. Uh, distribute cheap, efficient cook stove or solar cookers to poor families. Reduce or ban indoor smoking, which has been a worldwide uh, effort. Acid deposition. Main sources are sulfur and nitrogen. So reducing the burning of fossil fuels in general, especially coal because it emits so much sulfur is going to lead to reduced acid deposition. Um, increase again renewable energy. So it's kind of repeating the same things over and over again. In terms of cleanup, um, these two options do not sound like something we want to really get into, but adding lime to an acidified lake, that means a lake that has been affected by droplets of acid uh, deposition or acid precipitation, will neutralize the lake so basically you're adding a base to reduce the ph or increase the ph i should say from low levels to a, a tolerable level and adding phosphates to fertilizers we know will lead to eutrophication but this also helps to neutralize the lake so you're adding something that can cause another uh, problem which is uh, a highly eutrophic lake which will lead to algae bloom and loss of oxygen but it's the only way to increase the ph levels there's obviously always good news, and uh, the United States is pretty much leaders in that sense. Developing countries do are considered to have more air pollution. Here are some facts. Um, because of the low sulfur uh, initiative, SO2 emissions in electric power plants decrease about 66% in these years, and um, nitrous oxide emissions about 41%, and particulate matter by 28 Again, these are due to the restrictions placed on industry on the amount of emissions they can uh, produce of air pollution per particular gas. So older plants unfortunately are not governed by the same regulations. I'm sure there is a lot more um, facts to this topic. They're you know like kind of like grandfathered in so if you have a specific plant that's running a certain way they're going to be a little bit more lenient but they're going to have a timeline i'm sure and remember always that cars have been improved um significantly we have hybrids electric cars so not just fuel efficient but emissions have been improved uh so pollution from transportation is getting better